Hi there, welcome to this video where I'm going to do an indoor photography challenge. At the moment we're in the middle of January and I don't know whether you can tell from my voice but I'm quite croaky because I'm just recovering from a cold. Um, the weather outside is not very nice, it's cold and damp and not particularly pleasing. So I thought I'd stay inside and shoot a video and this gave me a really good idea that I would set myself a challenge to photograph an apple as many different ways as I can. Now this is something that is useful if you're stuck inside or just don't fancy venturing outside and the good thing about it is it will get you to be really creative it will help you practice some camera techniques and just think about uh, your photography in a really careful critical way because we've only got one subject and we've got to try and do it justice in as many different ways as we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some photographs of it whole, I'm going to try some different lighting conditions, maybe some with water, um, then I'm going to cut it up and take some pictures of the inside as well and you'll be surprised how many different photographs and techniques I'll be able to use with just an apple as a subject. So stay with me because I know that I'm really going to enjoy my photography. So you can see in front of me I've collected quite a variety of props and items to help me film this video. Now if you're anything like me and have been taking photographs for a long while you'll have loads of equipment that just sits in cupboards that doesn't get used. So I've dusted some of that off and brought it out this morning to help with this video. But you don't need lots of equipment um, to do this kind of challenge. Just a camera and a little bit of imagination is all that you really need. Now it is useful to have some kind of extra lighting because that can really change your photo photographs but just something like a head torch or a normal torch would be fine for this kind of thing and you can see there at the front of the table there's an angle poise lamp as well so we'll be using all of these throughout the video. I've set up my first shot and it's very very simple. All I've done is I've put down two pieces of white cord. Now this is mounting board that you use for mounting photographs but if you haven't got that any white paper or cord that can be used as a backdrop would be fine or even a tablecloth. It really doesn't matter as long as it's flat and plain it will um, just work perfectly. Um, what I've also done then is just to the left of the screen um, is a window and I'll show you the setup with um, a little bit of extra video so you can see how all of these setups have been arranged. Um, then just to the right over there I've got an extra light and what this does is it just provides an extra bit of fill light to the one side that's not getting light from the window but it also gives it a nice little catch light on one side of the apple to match the light from the window so that's quite nice as well. Then what I've done when I've taken the photograph is I've tried two different apertures and they give different effects. So I've tried a large aperture down at 3.2 and that has given a very shallow depth of field. Now that means that not all of the apple is in sharp focus. The front of the apple is in sharp focus but it starts to go out of focus as you go through to the back of the apple but what this also means is that the join between the two pieces of cards the flat piece of card and the vertical piece of card blends out and it's not as obvious. Then I've also taken a shot at f18 um, and this is quite different because that join between the two pieces of card comes into much sharper focus but the apple itself is now in focus all the way through from front to back so it's whatever effect that you're looking for. I've tried to do something a little bit different here and I've set the apple up over the sink um, so it's underneath the tap so I can run water into it or spray water at it just to create some different effects because it's over the sink it's not matterable. Um, now it has taken quite a bit of experimentation so what I'll do is I'll talk you through the series of photographs now. 
So it took quite a bit of experimentation finding the right way to mount the apple because I found that the water would knock it off anything that was too unstable. And this arrangement of the small dish on top of the larger dish worked quite well. Then I've got the black leather wallet behind that was waterproof to act as a backdrop. And the camera then was just a small amount of distance away with the flash gun on top. Now using the flash gun for this particular shot was really important because I wanted to freeze the action. Um, also um, having the black background was useful because it made the water droplets stand out as well. It just made it pop out from the background. Now you can see in this shot here that I'm getting a large catch light on the right hand side of the apple and that's coming from the window and so what I decided to do was close the curtains and um, this really helped. Now this wasn't a problem because I'd got the flash gun illuminating the apple anyway and so it worked a lot better and warmed up the tones and gave a much more pleasing image. I did try spraying the apple and trying to catch the water droplets. Unfortunately the spray bottle that I used provided a very very fine mist and so it only just was visible on the image. I think the lens might have got wet which actually has helped the image which has given some of the bigger blobs of bokeh on this image here. I did try running the tap over the apple. I quite like the patterns of the water that's flowing over the apple on this particular shot. It's quite pleasing, but I didn't feel like it was quite dramatic enough. So what I did was I filled up a large container of water and I tried dumping it on the apple. It wasn't always successful because as you can see from this shot, I had to set the self timer. And so I wasn't sure when it was going to fire. And in this particular image, I missed the apple. None of of those shots really gave me what I was looking for and so in the end what I did was I set up the apple underneath the tap to make sure it was hitting the apple and then I just went all out and turned the tap on really quickly I did wet the kitchen quite severely because it came out of the sink but I've got quite a dramatic shot as a result for this next shot, I've got out a piece of kit that I very, very rarely use. It was given to me by a friend who's a graphic designer and it's um, a portable studio. Um, so the sides are made of a translucent material so a light can shine through it and light up a product that's inside this little portable studio. So I've put three lights on either side. Now it turns out the two lights that came with it, one of them doesn't work anymore. Um, so I've had to improvise slightly with my angle poise on one of the sides but it still works just as well um, it's been interesting because what I've tried to do is a high key shot now to get a high key shot what you try and do is throw as much light as you can at the shot and slightly overexpose it so that uh, you don't get a lot of shadows and the, the highlights become more dominant. Um, it's quite an effective um, technique. So I'll talk you through some of the shots that I took now. So for these shots, the apple is placed exactly the same. The only difference is either the position of the lights or the exposure on the camera. Now this first shot, I wasn't particularly happy with how dark the front of the apple was. And so I wanted to try and get a bit more light hitting the front of the apple. And so I tried shining the head torch underneath the apple, as in this shot here, but I did get a catch light on the front of the apple, which I didn't actually like very much. So I abandoned that idea. So what I did is I moved the lights at the side further forward to illuminate the front of the apple more. And this was a lot more effective. And because it was coming through the sides of the soft box, it made for quite a diffuse light, which was very pleasing. But I didn't feel like I'd push the exposure quite far enough. I could still lift the exposure a little bit without overexposing any of the highlights to get this final shot, which is the true high key effect that I was looking for. I wanted to have a little bit of fun with this next shot. So what I've done is I've mounted the apple on this cocktail stick and I've attached it to this little mini tripod. So it does appear like it's 
floating in the air. And then I've put it in front of this canvas that I took of Whitby. Um, this is one of my photographs from quite a while ago, but it's on the wall because I'm quite proud of it. But it creates quite a good background. Now, what I've also done is I took a shot of this canvas with the exact same settings without the apple in front. So I can use that to just paint out the cocktail stick. Um, and then it'll just appear like it's floating in midair. But it's really useful to have backgrounds available if you're planning to take these kind of shots, whether it be still life or just product shots. Um, and what I've got here is a pack of different papers that have got patterns on them. And these are just bought from an art shop. Um, they're used for decoupage or other kind of things like that, but they're really useful. And I've taken photographs of all of these and scanned them into the computer. Um, on the back, there is some text and on the other side, there is some patterns. So you get two different types of pattern. You get this one and then on the other side of this particular pattern, there is a floral pattern and there's just so many to choose from. I find them so useful. And if you're planning on doing some still life work, they are invaluable. It's now the following morning and last night I did take two final shots um, to add to the collection and one is my favourite so I'll show you that at the end but it wasn't the last shot that I took because the last shot that I took was the apple cut into slices and obviously that was the final thing that I could do because once it was cut up it started to go brown very quickly and so I had to be quite uh, speedy with taking the photographs and so I would toyed with the best way of cutting it up and so what I did is I cut it into very thin slices and laid it out on one of these backgrounds that I showed you early in the video um, and that made for quite a nice image and then I also took one of the slices individually um, and took a photo of that as well. Then the final photograph that I took with the apple was one that was lit with just a single torch. Now this is just an ordinary torch, it's nothing special. Um, but what I did was I made a tube that fits over the end. Now this is just made of a bit of cord. Um, but what it does is it narrows the beam of the torch. So it's very circular, but very narrow as well. And then I lit the apple from overhead. So it was in a pool of light. And I think it's by far my favorite shot. It's very moody and atmospheric. Now I set the apple on this stand that uh, came with a globe that I've got. I put the apple on a white piece of card with a black piece of card in the background. And then I did lower the exposure as low as I could to make sure I didn't burn out any highlights and the, the card in the background didn't show up anyway. Um, but I think that I've got really a very, very stunning image and you will have seen it already because I've used it as a thumbnail for this video. So that's been a really interesting challenge and what I'll do now is I'll give you a little montage of all of the best images just so you can see what I've achieved. Well, I hope this video has given you a little bit of inspiration on what you can do on cold, wet days when you can't get out or you're struggling for an idea. Really, anything can be photographed. It only depends on your imagination. So it doesn't matter whether it's an apple or whether it's a kitchen utensil or just something you find in your knickknack drawer. Anything can be photographed. If you have enjoyed this video, do let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Instagram or Vero account. That's at Day Up Done Photography. Leave me your comments there and you can also see lots of my photographs. Now, if you like what I do on the channel and want to help support me to make future content like this, then you can leave via the gift shop 
that's at Teespring. There I've got a range of merchandise, so go and check that out because it really does help me out and it's very much appreciated. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications. It really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, go and check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe. And I'll see you soon.